America. <laughs> America. Uh, so we're going to read American stuff because we're Americans and it's America Day. Yep. Happy America Day. Uh, fuck you, Britain. We won. We, we dumped won. all of your tea. We dumped all your tea. <laughs> Can't do shit. What are you going to do without your tea? Your tea naval forces. <laughs> <laughs> That's what their ships were. They were just cannonballs, but they just shot bags of tea. Yeah. And we got rid of all their ammo. That was the strategy. Right, right. That, that's, that's the tech. That's the tech. Oh, the phone died. Oh, no. There we go. No, so, it just yeah. turns off after like five seconds of that activity. So we're going to read uh, nothing but uh, gun... Not gun. Nothing but America-related stories, things that have to do with America. Yeah. Uh, embracing our heritage. And the most important uh, bit of our heritage is guns, because we killed a lot of British people. We also killed a lot of Native Americans, but we're not proud of that part. But we killed a lot of British people, and we are proud of that part. Uh, and we also killed a lot of Americans. We also killed a lot of Americans. They were our cousins. It was okay. It was okay. It was between family. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> they, s they still bring their flag to to Thanksgiving, and we don't know why. It's, it's not okay. It's not. A, you can't bring your flag. <laughs> Damn right, I can. <laughs> oh jeez. It's like if you don't want me to use the rebel flag, don't make it look so dope. It is a really good design. It also looks kind of British. I take that back. Yeah. You know what? I take that yeah, back. It's a British design. Because uh, because today is all about killing British people. Fourth of July is all about killing British people. All right, George Washington. <laughs> That's what George Washington said. We're going to found this country on low taxes and killing British people. <laughs> He said, that's what he wanted to say. He was just more diplomatic than that. No, he just wanted to be like, hey guys, I'm going to spy on you. Spy on you? Yeah. He was really into espionage. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> so he was like Batman He's from Batman, the Batman movie where he makes the thing that spies on all the British yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. George Washington Batman. There you go, mm. DC. Write yeah. that write that one off comic. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm here for that. <laughs> so Contact us, DC. Time six minutes. Oh hey, that's an interesting name. Yeah. Uh <laughs> the loud bang on her front door jolted Clara from her daydream. This was it. After all the careful planning and struggling to survive, the end would come now. Nine blocks up in room uh, 934, because I have struggled making numbers mm. come out my mouth. Don't we all of struggle making numbers come out of your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> of the now abandoned Marriott. She started to cry, not for herself, but for her little three-year-old son, Jeremy. He was the world to her, and she couldn't bear to think of his short life ended not like this. Uh, so I guess this is like a post-apocalyptic thing. Is it? If it's like in an, an abandoned Marriott. I mean, maybe somebody just like, like, I don't know. Listen, there are abandoned Marriott's all over Detroit. There are. <laughs> Detroit's mostly abandoned, from what I understand. Oh, uh, <laughs> Except now it has androids all through it, uh, according to Kaje. Uh, Kaje? David uh, Kaje. Yes, yes. <laughs> but he's Canadian. Is he Canadian? I thought or, he was French. Cause I think he's French. Or does he have an obsession with, like, French children actors? No, he's... Or he's, is he actually French? Or does he just have that obsession? No, he's from Ubisoft, but... Do you think he pretends to be French? He definitely... He's a Francophone. And in America, we don't tolerate that. Espanol will tolerate, but keep your filthy francophones up there, Canada. But, but like, Cajun's really cool. But that's but that's because we Americanized it. Yeah. It's like, man, that this is really dumb. We need to make this like Southern fried and Cajun. That's what. That's all that it is. Is Southern fried Cajun? It, it, Cajun is just Southern fried 
uh, uh, French. Mm. You just take the language and deep fry it, and then you got Cajun. Yeah, just put a little, what, filet on top, and bam, there you go. Uh, open the door. She recognized the voice of her uh, li- live and boyfriend of four years, Jerome. Okay, so Jerome is alive and her boyfriend. Yes. That's, that's what I'm going to take from uh, the sentence. Yeah, we're getting some weird grammar here. Mm. Quickly slipping off the uh, guard chain, she opened the door and let him in. Mm. I don't have much time. The boys are going to pick out what's left of the path mark, and I want to be the first in line. He suddenly stopped. Damn, baby, you smell good. <laughs> what, what is that? I'm getting that Jerome is uh, is uh, a black man from his vernacular. If he's saying, "Damn, baby, you smell good." I mean, he you don't know that. Is it specified? It's not, but his name is Jerome. Post in the comments if you're Jerome and you're white. <laughs> Shout out to all the white Jeromes. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, The Makeup of America. It's called Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. I I kind of feel like I'm being trolled a little bit. I feel like this might be a troll pasta. I don't know, but, like, I love that it's just, like, it's called Love by Sarah Jessica Parker. She said simply, I found it next to the minibar. Only the best, right? This has got to be like an apocalypse. Otherwise, why would you use perfume made by Sarah Jessica Parker? I don't. <laughs> perfume for for horse faced ladies. <laughs> um, yeah, he said as he left two backpacks next to the door and turned to leave. Okay, uh, I'll be back soon. Keep the door locked. Uh, okay. Jerome was a survivor. He's not gonna give up. I very. <laughs> I forget the rest of the. I know the lyric. I know what the, the sounds are, the phonemes, but they kind of like slur their speech together. I'm a survivor. I'm a forgiver. No. no. I'm a survivor. I haven't read The Giver. I didn't graduate <laughs> middle school oh either. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Jerome was... I was like, where's my phone? I can look up the lyrics. And then it's just like, oh, oh, yeah. oh shit, you have my phone. Uh, that's like a Black Mirror episode. Where is my phone? I'm your phone. <laughs> your boyfriend was your phone all along. It's like, uh... Um, Blade Runner. Blade Runner, yes. To Electric Blade Runner Lou. Spoiler, it turns out that he's a phone. <laughs> he was a phone all along. I'm the real Ryan Gosling. I'm the Black Mirror Ryan Gosling. While everyone else was scrounging for supplies downtown, he had the bright idea, oh my god, uh, to make to take his little family to the local Marriott to wait it all out. No one is coming for us. They've given up on the major cities, he said simply. They keep putting, like, he said, like, they said simply, she said simply, he said simply. The plan was just... They're just, they're all just simply stating it. Mm Mm-hmm. Simply. He was scrounging up for stuff. He found some simply orange. Um, the plan... Simply by Sarah Jessica Parker. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Simply by Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh, the plan was to just let everyone kill each other while they lived the high life. Stories up in the now abandoned hotel. It had worked. Most of what was left of humanity and the creatures, so it's zombie apocalypse, or, or zombie apocalypse substitute like Last of Us, mm. um, had pretty much wiped each other out. Now that it had, now that it hadn't been a tough few months, not that it hadn't been a tough few months, the power was now out, and they were down to canned goods. Mm, Mm. Do you think that would work? Mm. Go to the top of a Marriott, and then people won't find you in the zombie apocalypse? I don't know. I've never been in a zombie apocalypse. I can't really say from first-hand experience. Sure. But my assumption would be... 
this is a terrible plan if it is indeed a zombie apocalypse. Because, mm-hmm. like, if they, if they, like, I don't know, catch your, your scent or, like, your blood scent or what the fuck ever attracts the creatures, mm-hmm. and you run back to the top floor of the Marriott, where the fuck are you going to go once you're at the top? There's no, like, good escape route. It's also just... Although, like, aren't Marriott's, like, I don't know, maybe it's just an Ohio thing, but I feel like they're all, like, two stories. No, no. Or am I thinking of, like, motels? You're thinking of motels. <laughs> Marriott's, Marriott's are usually nice. They, they decorate everything all up Mormon. Owned by Mormons, did you know? No. no. I don't think I've ever actually stayed at one, so I, I don't know. I'm filling in the blanks on my information gap from Marriott's, like... With red roof and knowledge. Well, uh, <laughs> Elias gets like a discount because his family knows people. Um, but uh, they were still alive. Clara Drag. Wait, who's still alive? Uh, but they were still alive. They were down to canned goods, but they're still alive. Okay, so they're eating like peaches. Yeah. Uh, Clara dragged the two bags to the kitchen area and pulled out dented cans from the bedroom. She heard. Jeremy waking up. A few minutes later, he came into the main uh, uh, living area. This is a big-ass Marriott hotel. It must be like the suite or something. I don't know. The the presidential. I don't know Mormon how Marriott's presidential. Work. Yeah. I clearly don't know how Marriott's work. No. <laughs> so is this like a normal hotel? Yes, sir. Why would you say, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, but like, this is a Mormon hotel. It's like, oh yeah, it is run by... Why would you think that's any different? Uh, mommy, mommy, look. I've got a gun shooter. A gun shooter? A gun shooter. So it shoots little guns? Uh, his excited eyes locked onto hers, and she sighed. He was holding some kind of plastic handle he had obviously broken off of one of the cabinets. He pointed it at her. Bang, bang, bang. I think this is a person who's spent... Bang, bang. Our, our author... Pull my devil trigger. <laughs> that's a little Nero. It's a little baby Nero. A little baby babby Nero. Yeah. Um, I get the feeling that this author has never been around kids because kids don't talk like that. They would just say gun. They would just gun. say gun. He wants to make the the kid. The author wants to make the child them articulate. Uh, sound no inarticulate because they're saying like gun shooter. Yeah, but like they're doing that too articulately. They would say. It, I, I don't know. It I don't think it a child would true. even say gun. A child would probably just be like, hey, it's purple. Purple. Mm, not me. I, I, loved, I loved guns as a child. You know yeah. what I liked? I hate guns. James Bond is is a hero all about shooting people, which is what I learned from Goldeneye. No no sneaking or espionage. Mm. Uh, but but uh, it's, it's fine, because uh, Jimmy Bond... The American remake of the first James Bond movie. Uh, that guy is way better than James Bond because he's American. Yeah. I don't know any of this. Today is about killing British people. Uh, it <laughs> it reminded her of the awful gang violence just a week prior. Both Jerome's crew and some Asian gang had a disagreement over who owned what's left of a number of grocery stores. That had ended with a few of their good friends dead. She didn't know, show it. Let me see, honey, she said, holding her hand out. Uh, he turned and ran into the bedroom. That was the annoying thing about uh, the age. They never did what you asked. That is not true. Uh, I've already forgotten this kid's name. Is it Jeremy. Joel? Jeremy. Okay, it's Jeremy. Yeah. My mind's just like... Joel. From the, child, the last of us. The child's name is Clementine. She walked, uh, she quickly ran after him and pulled it out of his hand. She was now extremely careful not to let him, let him have anything that he could hurt himself with. Uh, it was safe enough. It was safe enough? It was safe enough? It was safe enough. This clearly needed another draft. Uh, it's also, I, I don't know how to feel about, like, the whole, like, Asian gang thing. Like, is that really what you're worried about in, like, an apocalypse? 
I mean, it sounds like they're kind of going for a um, Walking Dead scenario of the humans are scarier than the zombos. That's that's always the case. They yeah. always do that. Yeah. But like, but why would they? I don't know what if there would like necessarily be a racial component to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a zombie apocalypse. I don't think you're going to be like, oh, it's the Asian gang. Oh. They own, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, that makes me think of um, that one gang from the Powerpuff Girls for some reason. Rowdy Rough Boys? No. Gang hmm. Green? Did they have British accents? They might have. Man, that's they're, they're awful. We need all American villains, like the Rowdy Rough Boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Other than the next two hours of constant noise, there was no harm in letting him run around with it. So did he have an actual gun? I don't know. Let your children have guns. Uh, I'm not crazy, right? None of this feels true. Uh, all of it just feels off. I can't place myself in this world. You can't really relate, honestly. Couldn't relate. Yeah. Uh, mommy, can we play the gun game again? Mommy, look at me. Mommy, mommy, can we play the uh, gun shooter game again? Uh, Mom, I want to play Fortnite. I want to play the Fortnite. Mom, I want to play Fortnite. The power's gone out, Jer Jeremy. Mommy, I want to play the gun game. Mommy. Yes, yes, we can play the gun, the game again. She hated that game. Every time she played it, it reminded her of the last couple of months. In the last hours of the city's death, both sides had come out of hiding and shot it out. What? What? In the last hours of the city's death, are there demons? Like, is it like an, a reckoning? Is it like... The rapture? Yeah. And none of them, like, went to heaven because they're all Mormons, and that's why the Marriott's empty. Because all the Mormons, all the Mormons got Mormon raptured to, to Mormon heaven, and there are no, <laughs> no Mormons left. All the Mormon businesses are vacant. Utah, completely empty. Hey, move to Utah. It's completely empty now. Yes. There will be no creatures there. No creatures in Mormon Utah. No, no creatures. No Mormons in Utah. Maybe that's not what the rapture was. Maybe the rapture turned all the Mormons into zombies. Uh, it was unsettling enough to be on, uh, on the outskirts of a war of a war zone. What made it absolutely unbearable? But who were the two sides fighting? I. Who was phone? This is this is America. Maybe it's just everyone shooting everyone. Who, who was gun? Who was gun? Does the child have a is real Joel gun? Joel gun? His name is Joel now, I don't it's, care. Okay. Uh, was absolutely unbearable knowing that one side of the conflict was composed of the Walking Dead. This person just watched an episode of Walking Dead and, like, yeah. felt inspired but didn't, like, come up with anything Felt inspired, unique. but, like, yeah. There are so many zombie stories out there. I was really... I, I, I feel like maybe they're building to some kind of twist, and it's just like a bunch of fluff to get to a twist. I don't know. I don't have that much faith. Uh, not, that I, not that I'm saying I would like the twist, but I feel like that's what we're going towards. Do you think we're doing like a village kind of thing? Not in terms of like the actual twist of the village. I don't think they're doing that. Hmm. I think they are doing a... A village style. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I was. Th I don't know why you said the village, and then I, for some reason, in my dumb brain, went to the lottery. Oh. Um, if that makes see, any no, sense. No, no, that does. That does. I see. I feel that. <laughs> uh, they have made it. I mean, yeah. Both of those have L's in them. So yes. Yeah. Oh my Christ! This is ridiculous. How quickly this turns off. Well, it is also under 40%, so... Uh, they had made it deal. as far as the hotel. Jerome and his, and his gang, as well as some of the other groups that had helped... Like, they're trying to, like, describe all of these, like, conflicts and stuff. You know, this but, is making me want to read this Naruto fan fiction where the zombie apocalypse happened. The, the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> but just in Naruto land. That'd be fun. It's a really good fan fiction. Actually. Is it like unironically good or? <laughs> yeah, it... like it's unironically really well done. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to like describe all of these like 
inner, like, these inner conflicts and everything, but they just fall flat because it's all telling, you know, and there's no showing. Yeah. As well as many other groups that uh, held off just by 5th Street, well within view of 9th Floor Marriott. They had been content to put bullets into enemies and move on. Conversely, when one of these things shot a human, they usually ended up carrying them off and eating them, so they're so sentient. So the things have pew-pews. Yeah, they're Resident Evil 6 zombies, not Resident Evil 1 zombies. Humans were fighting for survival. They were hunting for food. Uh, she had seen it firsthand. A couple of Asian thugs had been cautious, cautiously scouting between 5th and Broadway, the enemy descending upon them with a plan that was both aggressive and cunning. These were not meandering, shuffling corpses you saw in the movies. The enemies were very much so intelligent. My zombies aren't like other zombies. My, My zombies are quirky and offbeat. My zombies are manic pixie dream girls. Yeah, manic pixie dream zombies. Yep. Uh, and they were still out there. Uh, I love how they're just like, they're aggressive and cunning, but like, they don't explain how. It's the story. But like, is... also, I'm not going to like paint a picture of them being. Yeah. She had only run, and, and she's also, uh, the, the author, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, uh, uh, was also just putting out a bunch of stuff about, like, I can see them from the ninth floor of the Marriott. And it's like, okay, but like, what is the scene? But like, what are you seeing, though? Is there a like, giant. What are the creatures? Is there like, a giant. Give me something to work with. Blue vortex in the sky that has turned all the Mormons oh my God, no. into. Zombies? No, what if it's like all the creatures are just like little vortexes with tentacles coming out, but like they have like the guns? <laughs> it's like pew pew pew. So it's Tasmanian Devil, but with guns. <laughs> yeah, and tentacles. She had only run into one of them once. Oh my god. Jerome had been given her had given her a handgun off of a dead Why police officer. Why are you using your phone if my driving? Because mine is also dead because for some reason it didn't charge like that. And told her just to point and squeeze. To be honest, he had taken care of things so well that she didn't think she'd actually have to do any shooting herself. But a day ago in the hotel, one of them had slipped by the patrol and gotten into the building. She and Jeremy had had gone to get ice. The power had still been working then when she heard the slight shuffle of feet around the corner. She knew where it was and what it wanted. It could smell the rotting, she could smell the rotting flesh, something inside her, something, some force of survival helped her to know exactly what to do. The primal maternal instinct within her gui guided against the awful predators. Hopefully they're predators, that'd be better. Heart racing. Like rotting predators. Yeah, zombie predators. Yeah, that fell from outer space. Mm. Uh, her uh, heart racing. She moved with her son past the corridor where she knew it was lurking. Where it lurked. She even continued the casual small talk with her little boy, slowly slipping her hand into her pocket where the forty-five was located. In her pocket. In a woman's pockets? In a woman, you cannot put a forty. Like, have you seen women's pants? The one of, one of are two like... things are true about this author. One of two things are true. They've never worn women's pants. They've either never worn women's pants, or have have no conceptualization of guns. I think both are true. Hmm. You can't. Forty-five is a giant gun. Like, if you're talking about like a Colt forty, no, Colt forty-five, you can't put that. Uh, she knew that once she had, she and Jeremy were past the corridor, the thing would slip out of its hiding place and follow them, hoping for a clear shot. Um, once past the corner, she turned to heel, she turned on her heel, wrong heel. It's heel as in healing somebody up. Okay, I gotcha. So as opposed to like, wrong heels. word. Uh, pulled out her gun, rounded the corner, and just, and I whipped out my gun. Started firing. She was right. Not only had the thing come out of hiding, but it had moved at a quick pace, too. Uh, in the two seconds it took her to spin on her heel and draw her weapon, the thing was already within reaching distance. Four shots to the body and two to the head was still advancing upon her. She could still remember the expression of surprise and fear on its face before its entire head popped. The gray matter spilling everywhere behind it. 
She had expected to see some expression of an undead creature, twisted in hatred and loathing. It's ter the terrifying thing. This is n all telling. I'm, yeah. This isn't... This is very this, this repetitive. This needs some work. This needs some work. Uh, the terrifying thing was that, aside from the rotting smell and blackened appendages, its face still looked human. Oh my god, how much more? They saw me soon. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, Rick. Oh jeez. Oh boy. Oh jeez, Boogie Pop. <laughs> Not wanting to see if there were any more of them, she grabbed her son and bolted for room 934. Nine, three, uh, nine, nine, nine. Is she Herman Cain? <laughs> Maybe. She frantically reached into her pocket for the hotel room key card, cutting her hand on the various survival items in her po How much shit does she have in her pockets? How many pockets does she have and where does she shop? Oh, man. Uh, she, sw she swiped it over and over on the door, desperate for the green signal that would indicate the lock would give, finally. Uh, give. Finally it did, and she grabbed her son and shovel, shoved him inside. Shuffled him inside. <laughs> shoved him inside. It doesn't say shoveled him inside. It says shoved. Um, rather than be traumatized by the whole event, Jeremy's little mind instead translated it into a game. The gun shooter game. His three-year-old psyche interpreted the events as some elaborate fantasy. One that he wanted to repeat. That did not. That's... Uh, no. Children are not like this. No. Children are profoundly traumatized by hearing real gunfire. Uh, it was odd that way that the child's mind translated near death. I think they mean to, like, say near-death experience or something. Right. And now, Clara had to relive the entire incident over and over again in, her, in order to maintain the facade that the two of them had not escaped certain death just yesterday. I... I, Wait, so this was just yesterday that the events of the PQs yeah, happened. Yeah. And the electricity was working yesterday, no, but not today. No, the The electricity, I believe it said, was working two weeks ago, uh, and they were going to get ice. This is when this happened, okay. but it also happened one day ago. So the timeline's off. Literally wobbly timey wimey. Bang, bang, I got you, Mommy, in the head. I shot you, you're dead. A child would not, you're dead, Mommy, that's, fall that's down. Not... Fall down. Uh, she humored him enough, and she couldn't take the reality of the previous day's horror anymore. I don't want to play the game anymore, sweetie. Go eat your dinner. Go, go eat your canned peaches. Uh, she was surprised when he obeyed. Do you, does she just not have control over her child? No. Um... Sitting at the kitchen table, she watched as Jeremy ate the food she had made for him. Let's not specify what it was. Right. Give us no no little details to... To how it was made. Did, are they doing, like, the little, uh... Little, little tiny, like, single-plate burner? Like, maybe, running on gas? Or, like... Are they doing the thing from uh, a Goofy movie when he uses the lighter thing? Right. Are they eating directly out of the can? Yeah, what are, are kids... Plates? What are kids doing now when they watch the Goofy movie, when they, like, see... Goofy hit the lighter thing to make the the, right. the cigarette lighter, and then he makes the can. Kids nowadays have got to be like, what the fuck is that thing? Cars right. don't have that fucking thing. What is that? Right. Is that like some, like... Relic of a past age. What is, yeah, what is this? It's like the save icon. What is that? The save icon? Yeah. Floppy yeah. disk. Oh, gosh, yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sitting at the kitchen table, she watched as Jeremy ate the food she had made for him since yesterday he had not trouble eating. She put the food in her mouth, thinking about the great what pieces of brain splattered all over the adjacent floor and vomit. But whatever it was about watching her son gobble up the last piece of canned squash and mashed carrots seemed to finally convince her appetite what? to surface. In fact, she was really hungry. Wait, no, go back up. Mm -hmm. Where, Where are they getting, like... Canned squash and mashed carrots. I don't know. Asian grocery store? Maybe that's why. Canned uh, squash? The, the, the multicultural versus Asian race war. They, they got all the canned carrots at the Asian grocery store and now they're fighting over it. 
I mean, like, carrots, maybe, but, like, squash? I do like the... Uh, it, it, Have you ever seen canned squash anywhere? I don't know. But I do like the idea of, like, a zombie apocalypse happens. And and some people, like, everyone just looks at each other and, like, we agree, right? Race war. Time for a race war. <laughs> like, oh, what? Is this your first race war? Is this your... <laughs> uh, she leans toward him and kisses him on the cheek, His uh, her maternal instinct kicking in again despite the nausea. <laughs> this is... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, author. This is not good. This is very. This could lacking. be. This could be better. Like more details. This is not an a very. Um, this is not a very American story. One more details. Two look at women's pants. Three interact with children. <laughs> you gotta write what you know, and this person is writing nothing that they know. I. Hmm. Sometimes a mother just has to reach out, grab her child close, and, and kiss shake him. Shake them vigorously. <laughs> and kiss him over and over, especially considering the recent events. She nuzzled her lips against his cute baby fat cheeks and rubbed her nose onto him. This is. What? Something was wrong. She felt an unusual, insatiable desire to bite. Oh my god. Um, nom, nom, nom. His flesh, his soft, supple baby fat called to her. <coughs> it says that, it says that in the story right here oh on your phone. God. Called out to her aching stomach and demanded union. She stood up quickly. So is that the twist? She's been like a Mormon zombie all along? So like, how did she turn? I don't, who knows? What is she turning into? She's turning into one of the Mormon zombies. Rapture zombies. No, she whispered. Please God, no. She ripped off the bandages and looked down at her wounded hand. The blood vessels came next to the blackened incision and ever so slightly blackened up her veins. Like a mild case of tinnitus. Tinnitus? Tetanus. Is that... Is the... Tetanus. Where? Tet... Tetanus, yeah. Tet... So tetanus... Tetanus. Uh, the, you confused me with the tinnitus thing, because it's just like, what? I, would, I was also confused about that, but that is also not what tinnitus looks like. No. Um, I mean, like, blood tetanus, poisoning. Tetanus, right. What she had... Septic. What she had cut in her hand on again. Uh, Jeremy sat at the kitchen table, mindlessly muttering the gibberish of a three-year-old and coloring outside the lines of his favorite dinosaur book, This Person Doesn't Know What Kids Are. She Wait, watched him. Three? Yeah, I guess. She watched him for a moment, knowing that she, uh, if she did not act quickly, her maternal instincts would be overcome by her insatiable hunger. Of course, I'm <laughs> there, not feeling there, are, it. there are two wolves in you. One is a mother, and one is a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh boy! Well, the other day when we were eating with everyone, the two wolves. So. There are two wolves in you. One has syphilis and one has No, no, glitter. one has herpes and one has One has glitter. herpes and one has glitter. Right. Because you can't get rid of them. <laughs> of course, uh, she could just give in uh, if whatever inside her uh, hand did to Jeremy what it had done to her. Uh so, like, are these, like, spirits that are jumping between people, like, through a Wait, knobs? of course she could just give in if whatever was inside her hand did to Jeremy what it had done to her. Is this, like, was idle Jer hands? Was Jeremy a zombie? Was Jeremy a Mormon zombie? I don't know. I don't think... This was not mentioned. I don't know what's going on. Her indecision was broken by her son's innocent query. Mommy, well, let's play the gun game. Okay, sweetie. Yeah, I knew it was going to, like, a twist of, of, like, the gun game is going to be used for the child to actually kill something or something along those lines. Right, but, like, if he's three, he's not gonna... 8.62 out of 10. No. 265 people voted. No. This is why I don't feel bad critiquing these stories harshly, because it always ends up that there's, like, a giant that's like, man, that was good. Yeah, no, I... Mm. That needs a few, uh... few rewrites, I think. No, it, it, 
it it's flawed from the premise because it's just like I watched zombie movies and think I can write my own. All right. And like it was all building to one scene, but it wasn't doing anything in the meantime. Like we don't really know much about the kid. We learned like nothing about the characters. We, yeah, we know we learned nothing about the characters. All we really learned is that like Jerome is a survivor. Like I can kind of like. Like, there's not a whole lot there, but there's stuff to latch on to there. Like, he's a survivor. He's kind of, like, going to war with this, like, gang of Asian people. So maybe he's a racist. Um, and so he's he's fending for them. Maybe he's a zombie. Maybe, maybe he's not. He's yeah, there, there's that one. Yeah. I, I rate it not American out of America. Yeah, I agree. Continuing on with our uh, American... America. America creepypastas. I'm proud to be an American where I can watch Sailor Moon and they're not gay. They're just cousins. They're Kissing gay. cousins. They're, no, they don't kiss. If one of them was a man, then they'd be allowed to kiss. But we're not having any female lesbians... Cousins. Female lesbian cousins. Female lesbian cousins. But male lesbian cousins would be okay. Yes. Okay. Now that we've cleared that up. Uh, what is the gayest sport there is? Baseball. Nothing more lesbianish than baseball. Softball. Softball. Same thing. Softball has more lesbians. Same thing. I mean, there's something hot about, like, stocky uh, lesbian pitchers. For softball. Okay, just me? Just me? Stocky? Like stocky. stalkerish? Okay. No, stocky. Okay. I was imagining the wrong application for stocky. <laughs> <laughs> just just a, a woman dressed up as a baseball player. Like you're coming out of a club, a nightclub with some friends, and there's just a, a, a lesbian there with a baseball bat and a ball. <laughs> Just, just waiting on you. <laughs> and she just waits on you wherever you go. All right, so we are reading baseball. Uh, Jeffrey and Tom loved baseball. When they were young, they had played on the town's baseball team. Jeffrey had been the pitcher, and Tom had played second base. <laughs> uh, now that I they were I older, really, I really thought that they were going to say one was pitcher and one was catcher. That would have been great. <laughs> Jeffrey was Simi and Tommy was Uke. Oh, my God. Now that they were older, they spent their time watching baseball games on TV and talking about baseball. Do you think they have girlfriends? That's what happens, though, isn't it? What? Like, <laughs> you go from playing a sport to watching it because it's easier. Yeah. Uh, I will say that uh, Jeffrey and Tom are really weird names for lesbians. Yeah. Do you think they play baseball in heaven? Jeffrey asked Tom one day. That's a good <laughs> question, said Tom said. The one who gets there first should let the other one know somehow. As it turned out, Tom got to heaven first after he was in a bad car accident. Because he's an angel in an outfield. Yes. <laughs> angel in the centerfold. Um, Jeffrey waited patiently to hear from him. One day, Jeffrey found a see-through Tom in the living room. He was scared, <laughs> but curious. Not a ghost. A see-through Tom. <laughs> what that, was sounds, that sounds like a device that you would sell in, like, Peeping Tom magazine. Mm -hmm. It's like, send in your order to get a see-through Tom. Right. What's it like up there, Jeffrey asked, and do they play baseball? When it comes to baseball, I have good news and I have bad news. Is this, is this, this feels like it's not a scary story. It feels like it's a joke. I, I know, right? Like it's like setting up like a classy, like, like old timey joke your, your uncle will tell you or something. Right. But her aim is getting better. But her aim is getting better. Um, the good news is that we do play baseball in heaven. We have some fine teams. Very fine. They got nice butts, Tom. Also, everyone's gay. <laughs> I don't know why I 
said Tom, because Tom's now talking to himself. <laughs> well, ghosts aren't real. Checkmate. Checkmate. Theists. Uh, in fact, I even play second base on my team, just like in the old days. What's the bad news? Jeffrey asked. The bad news, Tom stated, started, is that you're scheduled to pitch tomorrow. Uh, oh my god. Waka, this, waka, waka. Uh, why is this on the Creepypasta Wikia? I don't know. We this is a literal this. joke. Right. This is a, this is like a literal, like, kid-friendly joke that you can tell children. The first comment is, this pasta is a whole lot of nope, 10 out of 10. A whole lot of, so someone was scared by this? Yeah. When people say nope, they usually mean like they're scared. Like someone was scared by... Yeah. Oh, this is super creepy, this is another comment. Sorry, you can't pitch tomorrow, I have stuff to do. Well, okay, so I do have a question, though. Mm -hmm. Deconstructing this joke, because it is a joke. It is very much a joke, honestly. Why would you wait until your friend's about to die to message them? Why don't you just be like... Maybe he has to be, like, weak. He's his, <laughs> his soul line must be his weak. His soul must be weak. <laughs> oh, man. I do love it. It's like, are you waiting now to tell me? Right? Like, I wanted to know while I was still alive, if you play baseball in heaven, and you're going to tell me now. I was going to find out the tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, it's like, yeah. well, I was planning on getting really smashed tomorrow, and this is written in a time when people care about baseball, so obviously Uber is not a thing. So, maybe I just don't go out drinking tomorrow. And then you don't die. Maybe that's what the thing is. He's just, he just like, well, I was thinking about getting trashed tomorrow, but um, I think I'll just stay at home. Not, yeah. He said in a car crash specifically, didn't he? Yeah. He's like, well, I'm not driving tomorrow. He just sits in his living room and then a car just. Right. The <laughs> <laughs> car just comes in and wrecks his shit. Um, uh, much better. That was a nice short. Refreshing, not a horror story. It's it's very much like a a horse, a donkey, and a llama walk into a bar kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it it is a uh, it it is like comedy and horror do match themselves, and like the setup and punchline and that kind of thing. Like it reminds me of that old creepy pasta. It's like I have the most wonderful news. Do you know that one? Mm-hmm. It's like a scientist is like trying to like figure out how to communicate with the dead, and like the whole thing is that they discuss like I'm butchering it and shortening it, but like uh, they come in and he's like dead one day, but like his laptop says like guys I have the most wonderful news, so like he died, but he figured out a way to like get the computer to like communicate with the dead because he's dead. Mm. It's like a joke. But it's a scary story, and that one's, like, unsettling, but this one is just, like, straight funny. Right. Tell this joke to your, like, nieces and nephews. Uncles and aunts. Grunkles. Don't forget Grunkles. And Grants. 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 Trying to think of how we can start this. Fancy meeting you here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a few days later. It is actually July 4th itself instead of beforehand. Right. Congratulations. Happy birthday, America. Happy Stop shaving your armpits to support the French. To support the French? <laughs> they supported us. That's true. Yeah. We would have never won the American wars without the support of the French. I think. And their wine, might, sure. Yeah, and their wine. History, history, historian Chelsea. Historian Chelsea. <laughs> Her story in Chelsea. Uh, we're reading <laughs> uh, uh, Siren Fireworks, and I pulled up this story because it was a reasonable length, and it was about fireworks, and therefore Fourth of July, and I scrolled down to the bottom and noticed... Hopeless Night Owl wrote this, who uh, also has a story that was written 
and uh, narrated on the Fear Fiction channel. Oh, yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, for that cool, nice, cool, cool person. Let's see what uh, their story has in store. We'll just go back and forth, I guess. Maybe uh, now maybe. that we have both have phones, because my phone is charged. I mean, we could continue the trend of like one person reading it and then the other one reacting. Okay, but who re reads this one and reacts? Uh, rock paper scissors. This is getting needlessly complicated. <laughs> Who did? Do you want to read it? Uh, have you ever noticed how fireworks shows are kind of, well, disappointingly dull? This has been on my mind a lot recently. Fireworks have been around for centuries, and American fireworks shows for decades. Yet if you watch videos of the bicentennial celebrations and compare them to current shows, you realize fireworks haven't exactly come a long way. If anything, fireworks shows now are probably more boring due to more stringent safety rules. I don't know, but that's the way it is for air shows, so I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I think that some people can relate to this. I personally, you know, if you're only, like, watching fireworks once a year, and your expectations are extraordinarily high, you're just like, hey, fireworks. But, like, they are going to lose a certain amount of magic from, like, your childhood when you were more carefree. And, like, hey, summer just started, and now we get to blow shit up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I can I can relate, but I disagree, mm -hmm. you know? Right. But this isn't the author necessarily talking. This might just be the narrator talking. You right. know what I mean? Right. Point is, fireworks have not gotten bigger and better like everything else has. We have not, for example, figured out how to produce cheap blue fireworks for consumer use, and I doubt many people are working on that. Only the elite shows get to have true blue fireworks, while everyone else has to settle for a shade of off purple or tinted gray. Nor have professional shows gotten grander. If you want to truly be wowed, you have to go to the best shows, and even then they can get dull after a while. Even the big firework shows in Asia can't really compare with the spectacle of a violent... Vi violent. Yeah, violent. Violent. Yeah, violent. Yeah. See, my mind was just like you're saying violet, not violent. And I was getting my wires this, crossed. Th see, what happened was, this person has already picked their vernacular. They're calling it purple. None of this yeah, violet, I, I, European, I, violet nonsense. Yeah. My mind was just getting confused, though, with those two words. <laughs> Lightning show over a city, a sunset on the beach, a double rainbow, or even a full moon on a clear night. Personally, I go to the Lantern Festival sometimes for a change of pace. I... This is really resonating with me. I really wish that I didn't know the person and already like their writing, because it's kind of like prejudiced me, I think, maybe. I'm worried about that. But I I like that this is talking about an industry thing. Like, let me tell you, do you know about the firework wars? Because, boy, I don't envy you, envy you if you don't know about the firework wars. Like, they're, they know about this stuff, and it's something that they apparently really care about, and they're, like, talking about all of this, like, you know industry jargon and everything, and I like that, and they're also like, you know, I like getting outdoors and thing, seeing things lit on fire, but I'm more into Chinese, le Chinese lantern festivals now, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's great. I like that. I realize that if you aren't a firework enthusiast like me, then this probably doesn't matter to you. Sure, fireworks may not have been evolving much, evolving, evolving much, but it's not like people are really complaining about it. Recently, though, I was browsing a message board for firework enthusiasts and technicians and found a thread titled, Why Haven't Fireworks Gotten Better? The thread basically expressed the same sentiments I just related above, and several people have said that they have been wondering the same thing. Is this... Follow me here. Is this fireworks thing an elaborate metaphor for creepypasta? Why haven't creepypastas gotten better? Well, people seem to be happy with the creepypastas we have, and then this person is discontent with it, like I am discontent with creepypasta. Mm. <laughs> it, uh, it, it is this thing where it's like, well, it's scary, it's scary and it spooked me. And it's like, but it wasn't good, though. It was really bad. Did you think about any of the many, many plot holes? Mm. And it's like, I didn't notice them. You know? It's a, like... You know, this person cares about the artistry of fireworks, but most people don't because they go up in the sky and they explode and they're happy with that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, boom, boom. I like this, I like this narrator because they're a malcontent just like me. Mm. You know? Mm. 
One reply said someone in the industry had apparently thought the same thing. He mentioned Siren Fireworks, a fireworks brand about which little was known. At first I thought maybe they were called that because they sounded like a siren when they went off, but now I know that's not the case. Siren Fireworks showed up in a rural Mississippi... Missouri. <laughs> Missouri. <laughs> Missouri County between 2000 and 2003. Kids got a hold of them somehow, but they were never willing to say where they got them. And to this day, no one knows who made them. Kids were said to claim they were superior to all other fireworks as in way cooler. Okay, I like that. A uh, lot of Fleming effect here where we're getting like really interesting details. You know, this is in rural Missouri. It's between 2000 and 2003. And the kids uh, aren't telling you where they got their hands on them. Hmm. So, like... You know, they're making some, like, Faustian bargain with the devil for better fireworks. Right, as you do. Um, and, yeah, I'm I'm uh, really enthralled with the, the way that this is building up. I wonder where the horror is going to come in, but they're really laying the groundwork well. They're doing... It's like when a, a lawyer goes up and, like, has to lay out all the facts of the case before they make their arguments. You know, it's like, this is true. Right. This is true. Right. And then you get to the actual argument. So I'm excited to get to the actual horror of this. The mm. scary bits. Apparently, Siren Fireworks made a small blip on the national news radar when it turned out a lot of kids... Turned out lots of kids were getting injured from using them, even compared to other fireworks. And although the news never had time to mention this since it was a minor story, the especially strange thing was that none of the injuries involved birds. Yes. Nice. One girl who very nearly died while using them with friends was actually hit by a car somehow. Okay. Ooh. So they're cursed fireworks. I like this. Maybe it's... A subversion of expectations, because you always hear that, right? It's like, you know, we got to make fireworks illegal. Well, why? It's like, well, this kid, you know, got them illegally and blew off his thumb with an M80 or something like that, you know? Mm. And this is kind of like subverting that. It's also... Reminding me of 12 Minutes by Robokai. Mm. You know, because it's like, you know, local news picked up on it, but, like, it wasn't a huge thing, you know? Yeah. This piqued my interest instantly. I researched all I could find on the web about Siren Fireworks, which wasn't much. No one seemed to own any, although some message boards had pictures of Siren Firework packaging. But little information was available beyond that. It's also a little bit like some of the products that you would see come out of, not so much the RPC Foundation, but like old school SCP stories where it's like, mm -hmm. uh, they would just have like companies that would just kind of like pop up out of nowhere and it's hard to get a hold of like how these things were made. Mm -hmm. And I, there is just like this mysterious, who is this company? Like trying to find out about an internet mystery thing. Right. And uh, you can also kind of tell that our... A uh, narrator is a little bit of a boomer because they're, like, capitalizing web. I was searching on the web about it instead of saying the internet, like, every, everyone just says internet now. Right. <laughs> People don't say web. So, like, this is, and he's going to, like, firework forums and stuff. Like, I like, we're getting characterization in small bits throughout the story. Right. I finally found someone who claimed to have a set and was willing to sell them for $600. I talked him down to 400 and received the package a few uh, a couple days later. Now, I'm a fireworks enthusiast, but I don't actually collect fireworks. I know some people who do, and the issue with it, besides the obvious question of how to do it safe and legally, is the same issue with having a fine wine. Do you eventually drink it, or just have it on display forever? Part of me didn't want to launch these fireworks that were apparently legendary in the enthusiast community. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, th this is bringing up all these dilemmas. They're also saying, they keep bringing up all of these things of like, this is like this, this is like this. So they're kind of like relating it to other stuff. That way it's making it clear that this is not just a phenomenon about fireworks, if that makes any sense. Like, they're trying to get you into this fandom right. as quickly and as effectively as they can. Right. Eventually I decided to, though and got two of my friends to come with me. On July 4th, 2017, we set out to make an un we set out to an undeveloped field to test them out. At midnight, we launched just one rocket. 
The thing exploded into a mosaic of colors. It may have been the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Not only was there every color of the rainbow, but there were multiple shades of each. It was dazzling. I could hardly have looked away if I wanted to. The sound of, my ex the, sound of the explosion was actually pretty faint to my memory, but the colors, the colors. It was like a field of wild wildflowers projected into the sky or a giant sputter paint wheel. I do have the question, then. You spend $400 on these ridiculous fireworks. We're almost willing to spend 600 Do you not have a camera to capture the fireworks? Wouldn't you want to capture them and be like, hey, people on the forum, here's my YouTube video where I, you know, set these off mm. to, like, share the experience with them? Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Anyway. My friends and I came to from our trance, if you will when one of them fell partially into a ravine and sprained his ankle. We had already known the ravine to exist in the field, but we were dozens of yards away from it when we launched the firework. Good thing we didn't keep walking, because the ravine was something like 30 feet deep and very narrow. I still have the other rockets. I'm not sure what to do with them. Okay. So, um, all that happened there was an ankle was broken? No. So the person didn't actually get killed. So Except sprained. Sprained, sprained. Um, so there's like this ominous aspect to it where they're like cursed, but it's it's nothing concrete. Right. And uh, it's almost as if saying like, you know, people kept, you know, getting hurt and people kept getting killed, but they would get killed by other things. So like getting hit by a car, maybe... They just induce trances and people get careless. Right. So there's like this weird plausible deniability thing. Right. Uh, how do you feel about the ending? Hmm. It was... It was kind of... It felt kind of quiet compared to the rest of it. Yeah. I felt like there was going to be a little bit more. Um, I'm glad that this person undersold it as opposed to oversold it. It's like, you know, and then there was an Armenian genocide... Due to the fireworks. Right. Like, it, it's a smaller thing, which is good, but I think it could be a little bit more grandiose. Just a little bit. Um, maybe something... Yeah, like, I guess they are kind of like saying, you know, they were very... They, like, sprained their ankle in the ravine, but the ravine was even deeper, so there was that possibility of them dying. Right. But, like... It, it doesn't ring as true as, like, a deeper near-death experience. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, I enjoyed it, though. Yeah. yeah it was a good story. Um, very, very Ashcan story. Enjoyed it. You're such a fucking hoe. I love it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. McDonald's. <laughs> 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 so we uh, pulled up uh, McDonald's. There are many McDonald's-related creepypastas out there. Uh, this one has an image of what appears to be an Asian uh, effeminate boy or lady dressed up as Ronald McDonald eating a plastic severed hand. <laughs> to be a plastic severed hand, do you have to be like a full mannequin and then have it severed? Or can you make a hand that is just severed? These are philosophical questions about artificial life. That keep you up at night. Uh, my turn to read to you. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, I began a new job working at McDonald's in downtown Chicago, just 20 minutes away from my apartment. Since money's been pretty tight, I have to get by somehow. Uh, you know, a m lot of Good, relatable. good, relatable information right up front. A few weeks ago, something truly tragic happened. A man murdered his wife in the apartment next to mine. I barely knew the people who lived there, but judging by their constant verbal episodes each night, I couldn't help but feel that because I didn't do anything about it, this was all sort of my fault. I love that phrasing. All, all sort of my fault. Like, right. They, they, they're saying, like, it's all my fault, but it's also sort of my fault. And it's just a little bit my fault. Like, it's, but it's my really fault because my of fault. my inaction. Yeah. 
I think I've been there. Like, um, I mean, we all have. That's a really relatable thing. Feeling, feeling like you should have done more about something. Right. Yeah. Um, that night, when I was lying in bed, I couldn't get my mind off of the thought that someone was murdered just a few feet away from where I was lying, and it really gave me some horny dreams. When I finally started to drift to sleep, I suddenly ended up in my neighbor's apartment, literally witnessing the murder. Something was odd, though. Instead of the man murdering his wife, it was a deranged, hunched-over creature wearing the same uniform the McDonald's mascot Ronald McDonald does. Uh, he even had smeared clown paint. Dreams do get weird sometimes. Um, so you're working at McDonald's, and you just went through a traumatic thing where your neighbor was murdered. These are the kind of dreams that you will have. Yeah. You know, this is, this is, I'm just telling you, if you are in this situation, if you live in downtown Chicago working at McDonald's, and uh, someone murdered their wife next to you, and you're having these dreams, you don't need to go to a therapist. Everything is working out it's as intended. It's normal. Your brain is just sorting out information. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's working out as intended. <laughs> functioning as intended. All right. The, uh, <laughs> Ronald McDonald monster slaying your neighbor's wife in your dreams is a failure of the game designer. Oh, my God. Um... Uh, but, 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 it is weird that they're saying, like, a creature wearing the same uniform as the McDonald's mascot, Ronald McDonald. Yeah, we know who the McDonald's mascot is. That's, like, a weirdly worded thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Like, who doesn't know? Like, we're in America here. We know. We know. What if somebody's not? What if they're in, like, Antarctica, where there's only, like, five other people and a ton of penguins? There's only How five. How will the penguins There's know? only five people in Antarctica? Then there's probably at least six McDonald's. Okay. Every single one of them is a is a McDonald's employee, and they're all employees of the month. Yes. Does it ever bother you that the Krabby Patty literally has two employees? Just me? This does not bother anyone I've else? I've never thought about that before, actually. It's a fast food restaurant, and they have one cook, one fry cook, and they have one uh, cashier. Yeah. Well, sleep, they also sleep have a manager now. that just hangs out in his office. Owner. 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 Owner manager. But, you know, you should also consider if uh, you're having dreams about a McDon wrong McDonald creature slaying someone's wife, you won't now, because now the thought that the Krabby Patty only has two employees will keep you up at night. Yes. I stood there trying to escape, but I couldn't move. I was completely paralyzed as I sat there and watched this... Uh, the creature, hunched over, all demon-like, with its huge teeth and claws, digging into the elderly woman's flesh and biting into her, all while letting out a very loud, deranged growl. Suddenly, I woke up, still in my bed, panting and covered in sweat, arms heavy, vomit on my sweater already, McDonald's spaghetti. <laughs> Another problem with that is, like, dreams tend to not, like, stick with you like that, you know? No, it like, depends. Like they, I don't know. For me, they're always, like, way more muddled. And it's like, okay, here's the basic storyline. Here's the plot of what happened. But, like, I'm not going to remember, like, these claws digging into elderly women's flesh and biting in while letting out a very deranged growl. Like, I would remember details like that. You like, would? Like, um, I don't remember any of my dreams very often. But when I do, uh, they tend to be more vivid. Mm -hmm. And they tend to be, like weird, and they tend to have, like, long arcs of just, like, okay, brain, like, you decided that that's what you're going to do. Um, so, this isn't too weird to me, mm. and if this story doesn't, if the goal for this story, to not shit the bed, if this is just a person giving you their dream diary, and then something just a little bit weird happens in real life, right. then this is going to be a good story. Right. If this ends up like, and then I went to McDonald's the next day, clocked in, and then the McDonald's creature was there, then that's going to be a problem. Right. Or the husband was the creature all along. Aren't we all Ronald McDonald's? There's two demons inside of you. <laughs> one is Ronald McDonald's, Ronald and the other... one is Wendy's. 
One is Ronald McDonald and the other is supersized Ronald McDonald. <gasps> oh, jeez. A few weeks later, I had gotten my mind off of the nightmare. I started to experience insomnia, however, with it getting progressively worse each night and uh, each and every night. Uh, even with the nightmare no longer on my mind, and each and every day I kept getting more and more tired and almost lifeless. That's what working in McDonald's will do to you. That's what working in retail does to you. It drains your soul slowly but surely. At f food retail? Until you are just a husk of a human being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After work one night, I was walking home and could feel as if someone was walking directly behind me. <clears throat> Excuse me breathing on my neck, and nearly stepping on the back of my shoes. Oh, they're trying to flat tire him? Yeah. Trying to give it, it's a monster. But the monster no, is just No, that's a lady that's unsatisfied with what she got. Mm. That's yeah. a Karen right there, stalking her prey. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the secret, that's the twist, is the McDonald's monster was Karen, a Karen. Yes. Some people are going to be like, what's a Karen? Just... Just imagine, use the context clues you've been given here. It's yes, Karen. yes. I'm just tired, I thought, and I kept walking until I tried to cross the street, and the next thing I can remember, a loud banging sound uh, leading into blackness. I stood up, strapped to... Woke up. I uh, woke up, strapped to a bed. I woke up to justice. I woke up, strapped to a bed in a bright hospital room. I instantly began to panic, trying to escape, but it was impossible. Screaming, the sound echoed throughout the room, and still no one came. Uh, what the bleep was this? Suddenly I could see a darkened figure standing in the corner of the room. What the bleep was this? This is a child writing this. Uh, which is funny, because it's been fine up until now, but, like, just say what the fuck. You're in a hospital room. Say what the fuck. Yeah. Um, you're not even sure how you got there. You're, like, having problems remembering what is reality and what isn't. I was drowsy. Was this a doctor? A nurse? Probably not. It was... It finally began, uh, to come cl into focus from the shadows. First starting with a long, clawed hand. Is this going to be Ronald McDonald but the rake? Ronald McDonald rake? The creature stood... The McRake? The McRake, oh my god. Oh no. Oh no, not McRake. <laughs> Anything but McRake. Uh, the, <laughs> the creature stood before my bed, staring at me, grinning with its huge blood-stained teeth. The smell of rotting meat and blood filled the air at the hospital room. He had long, greasy red hair, and the same smeared clown paint, and suit from my nightmare. He stood over my bed, staring at me, until finally waking, walking over to the side of the room. He took his large, sharp claw and began to scratch into the wall violently until blood started to pour out of his long finger. He went back into the shadow, shadowy corner, and I could faintly read the message on the wall. M. Two bloody arches. Man, that's weird, because uh, this actually started off being uh, pretty okay. Oh, hey, I don't want you. Nah. Um, so, what, how do you feel about this? I did not like that twist, personally. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's just me, personally. Um, if it was something more subtle where it was like, instead of them ending up in a hospital room or anything like that. Right. If they, if the combination of being tight on money, because that will give you, that's a huge stressor. That's one of the biggest stressors you can have. Right. Um, this person ha didn't mention anyone else in the story. So I'm pre presuming that they live alone and they're lonely. So money issues, loneliness, traumatic incident of someone dying next door to them. Right. Feeling guilt is like survivor's guilt over that. Right. If you just have you know, insomnia due to this, all of these things... Yeah, and then just add some hallucinations from the insomnia, bam, there you go. Yeah, and then it doesn't need to be anything more than that, and it's just like you have something that just brings into question whether they're dreams or not. Just a small thing. 
Mm. Oh, even even if it was like something bigger, like someone was um, murdered at the McDonald's in the same fashion that the neighbor was murdered. Ooh, that'd be good. And it doesn't need to be any more distinct than that. It's just like you know, th- they were you know the police were confused because she was like. Kind of, it, it, you know, it was very clear that a knife was used, but it was almost like she was clawed. Like, it was just, they kind of, like, the knife patterns didn't match. You know, forensic knife patterns didn't match the claw shapes that were dug into her when she was killed. Mm. And then they do the same thing at the McDonald's. And right. then the McRake is just lingering out there, and you don't see it. But the McRake, you know the McRake is lurking out there, and it's free. Right. Maybe get, like, little clues of the McRake, like, scattered. Guys, I have good news. The McRake is back. (laughs) For a limited time. For a limited time, the McRake is back at McDonald's. $5.99. That's that's pretty expensive for a McRake. I don't know. what What do McRakes go for? I mean, like, where are you going to get a knockoff McRake? And they're only available for a limited time of the year. I'm trying to think of what the the Burger King equivalent of the McRake would be. It would probably just be, like, Whopper 2.0. Um, man. Whopper's Burger King, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ho- home of... Um, I don't think... I don't think that there would be any good Burger King cryptids... The raker? Uh, a McRake with cheese. <laughs> Please let us know your, your creepypasta dollar menu I, a character down in the comments below. Yes. Uh, this, this has been the 4th of July spectacular. Hopefully it came out on 4th of July. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, most people will probably watch this after 4th of July anyway, so who cares? YOLO. <laughs> Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this blah 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 check out the Fear Fiction podcast and uh, anything else have a wonderful day have yeah